All right, so next up we have atherosclerosis. Now, atherosclerosis is the buildup of cholesterol plaques within the vessel wall. So with this disease, who do you think is at risk? There you go, your smokers, your patients with hypertension, diabetes, as well as those with hyperlipidemia. Now, patients with hypertension, diabetes, as well as those that smoke, actually result in direct endothelial cell damage. And patients with hyperlipidemia are at an obvious increased risk because they have increased lipids that can deposit within the intima of the vessel wall. Some other risk factors include old age, because you're at increased risk of atherosclerosis due to the accumulation of deposits over a lifetime, as well as being postmenopausal for women, because estrogen is lost, and estrogen is a potent stimulator of HDL production. So without estrogen, there's less HDL made, and this results in a decrease in the reverse transport provided by HDL. Therefore, less cholesterol is transported from the vessels back to the liver. And last but not least here, family history. Family history also increases your risk of atherosclerotic disease. Now, with all that, let's talk a little bit more about the pathophysiology. Now, the atherogenic process is one of the more complex and high-yield sections of the pathology section. First off, we have endothelial cell dysfunction, and this leads to the accumulation of LDL within the intima. Now, these small LDL particles are strongly attracted to the proteoglycans in the vessel wall, and if they remain there for a long time, they will be oxidized, and this oxidation produces reactive oxygen species, which then can cause further endothelial cell damage. So what exactly happens when you damage the endothelial cell? Well, they react by expressing vascular cell adhesion molecule 1, as well as release monocyte chemotactic protein 1. Now, this combination will attract monocytes and allow them to adhere and enter the vessel wall. Now, here you can see an example of this process. Here is a monocyte in the process of transmigration across the endothelium. Notice here how all the action is occurring directly under the endothelial layer and above the media. Exposure to extracellular matrix causes the conversion of the monocyte into macrophages. Now bringing in the macrophages here is a protective mechanism because they will phagocytose the oxidized LDL to prevent more endothelial cell damage. The only problem is the macrophages cannot do anything with this oxidized LDL after they eat it. So the phagocytized LDL accumulates within the macrophage, creating what's called a foam cell. Now eventually, these foam cells will explode, releasing large amounts of lipid, proteases, as well as inflammatory cytokines into the intima. The oxidized LDL will also bind to receptors on macrophages, which will trigger the production of platelet-derived growth factor. Platelet-derived growth factor, in this case, will recruit smooth muscle cells into the intima. Then, fibroblast growth factor will tell local fibroblasts to deposit collagen within the intima. So now, looking at the entire process, we have dead macrophages spilling out oxidized lipids and cholesterol accumulating within the intima, surrounded by fibroblasts that are depositing a bunch of collagen, and vascular smooth muscle cells that won't stop growing. And all of this leads to the development of what is called an atheromatous plaque. And you can see an example of this here. Now, the image on the left shows our plaque at the microscopic level, while the image on the right is a macroscopic view of plaque within a coronary artery. Now, this artery is running across the epicardium here, and the branches here are diving down into the myocardium as well as the subendocardial layers. Now, let's shift gears to this microscopic view. Here we have the fibrous plaque, and the LDL crystals you can see here in the middle are surrounded by a very pink standing collagen. Now, the complications here are related to the decreased luminal diameter as well as the thrombogenic content under this thin fibrous cap. Now, if this fibrous cap ruptures or the luminal diameter continues to decrease, this can lead to downstream ischemia and or infarction. And in addition to the stenosis of the lumen, the presence of this plaque can actually disrupt the diffusion of oxygen and nutrients into the intima and inner layers of the media. This can lead to intimal as well as medial atrophy and necrosis, which can further weaken the vessel wall, setting us up for aneurysms. Alright, well that's going to wrap up atherosclerosis. See you in the next video.